tarde. All right, can everyone hear me okay? Excellent. Let's get this as close as I can. Um, <clears throat> I just want to start by asking for a little extra credit because my presentation is open source and on GitHub right now. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so this is running off of GitHub, as you can see. Um, so thanks, Robert. That was, that was a very kind um, introduction. So uh, my name is Aaron. I work for Open Plans. Um, open Plans, let me get focused here is a nonprofit organization. We are based in uh, New York and Philadelphia, and we build open source software to help make cities a little more awesome, um, which, in my opinion, is pretty much the best thing ever. I, I can't think of anything much better than that. And the way that manifests itself is around urban planning and community engagement. These are uh, the, 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 the problems and the challenges that we work on most. And this gets manifest in several ways. Uh, one project that we've worked on is uh, basically trying to build a technical bridge between the city of New York, the, specifically the New York Department of Transportation, and the citizens of New York, allowing them to collaborate, work together around uh, where their bike share uh, stations should be as, as they were um, putting that program together. Uh, similarly, in Chicago, we did a similar thing uh, just this week, um, or just yesterday, in fact. Uh, the mayor of New York announced uh, the Borough Taxi Program, which is around adding uh, specific, specifically taxi stands in the outer boroughs of New York. Um, if you're from New York, you understand this is kind of a, kind of a big deal. Um, not only that, but we are also working with the state of New York around uh, kind of post-Sandy resiliency. So how can we take, how can we crowdsource this information around like where, uh, wh where the, the errors in the data that they already have uh, in these uh, particularly vulnerable areas? What uh, corrections could they, um, could the citizens provide? What sorts of um, uh, issues, uh, suggestions can they offer? So that when the time comes when another Sandy is coming through, New York is gonna be in a better place. Uh, additionally, we work with participatory budgeting. Uh, how can we essentially crowdsource uh, municipal budgeting and uh, ask people where, um, where should we be spending our money and how? Uh, we also, uh, we don't just do work in New York, we do work all over the country. Um, this is a project we did uh, with uh, Mark and the city of Philadelphia around giving a technical tool to a very on the ground uh, Philly Rising program. Um, how can we use technology to augment the good work that they're already doing instead of trying to make like shoehorn technology into solving problems it's not meant to do? Uh, we used Google Street View to crowdsource where uh, information should go uh, in terms of uh, what improvements could be made on the on the street. And we also work on more whimsical things like uh, trying to measure how beautiful the entire city of Philadelphia is. But I don't want to talk about any of those. I want to talk about walkability. And walkability, I, in my opinion, is, is probably one of the most important, if not the most important tool that we have in our toolbox in terms of making cities and places really great. If a place is walkable, then there are so many other things that are really going to fall into place. And we need to be able to measure this if we're going to be able to improve it. Um, so this is... Uh, a long-standing uh, love of mine uh, when I was working at Azavia. This is a project that I worked on um, around how can we really measure uh, walkability. And um, uh, you know, many thanks to, to Rob. He, he basically set up the entire uh, technical overview of, of what this is all about um, in terms of doing raster uh, processing and analyses. Um, so I get to mostly talk about the interesting stuff. Um, so this, uh, what I'm, the, the, the project that I um, am going to, let's go to the next one. Uh, uh, the, the, the project that I'm gonna be talking about next is essentially a continuation of this, kind of the, the next version of that. And um, what we are doing is essentially thinking about walkability and access as a surface and not as a network. 
So instead of um, thinking about moving from uh, node to node along a network, we're best essentially thinking of humans traveling across the surface of the Earth, um, which I think is, is a much more accurate way of, of, of measuring these sorts of things. And my particular expertise as, as a software developer is as a, um, of a JavaScript developer and doing things in the browser. Um, so instead of trying to take this, this stuff and uh, do the really heavy, uh, awesome server processing that GeoTrellis is doing, like what if we could take some of that and run it directly in your browser without having to make any HTTP calls at all? So how would we do that? Uh, essentially, we need two main ingredients, uh, map algebra, which uh, Rob talked a lot about, um, and also JavaScript and Canvas. Uh, and particularly with map algebra is the cost distance algorithm. And I will kind of do a little bit of a technical deep dive into the way that works. Um, next. This is getting cut off, unfortunately. That's, there we go. Um, so to get started, we need a couple of things. Uh, we need our cost service, which is a raster. And uh, as, as Rob said, it's you know, basically a bitmap. But instead of putting uh, colors in your bitmap, you're putting uh, data in, in your bitmap. And what that data represents is as you're moving across the surface, how much cost, how much friction am I going to uh, encounter and accumulate as I move across the surface of, of this raster? And then the source pixels, the source pixels essentially describe where I am starting and not where I'm going. This is being funky. Um, so to uh, demonstrate this, this is basically the simplest cost raster ever. It's, it's a, a two by two uh, grid where the cost of moving across the surface for this pixel is one, this is one, this is one, and this is three. Pretty simple. And these are our source pixels. Basically, one is where we are starting, and zero is where we are not starting. So essentially, we're starting here in the upper left-hand corner, and we're going to traverse across the entire surface of, of, this, of this raster. And the way this works is it's, it's actually a relatively simple calculation. So if I'm going from here to here or here to here, it's, it's adjacent. So I'm going to take this cost plus this cost, divide it by two, essentially taking the average. So um, this is what the output would be. One plus one is two, divided by two is one. Great. Here, one plus um, three is four, divided by two is two. And then if you're moving diagonally, you apply the Pythagorean theorem, uh, which is basically down here, where you take uh, one plus one divided by two, which is um, one, and then multiply it by the, sorry, I probably messed that up. Um, and then multiply by the square root of two, so you end up with 1.14. Pretty simple, except nobody is ever, this is, we're always dealing with much bigger uh, rasters than this. So if we expand that one level just to see how things accumulate, um, I added fives around the corner, and we can essentially, we do the same thing uh, with the minimum uh, cost at that point. So here we generated all of these costs. This was our source raster. So this is the next one we would, that we would process. And we would look at all of the adjacent uh, 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 cells to this as well. And what that would look like is here we would do uh, 1 plus 5 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. But this is 4 because we are accumulating the cost of this guy as well. If you really want to geek out on this, Esri by far has the best documentation that I've seen. Um, this is how I learned how this thing works. Really great diagrams. Um, was extremely helpful for me. So practically, like, how does this work? Like, how would I go and do this on the web? Uh, the way I like to work with open data, uh, particularly OpenStreetMap, is uh, I'm usually dealing at a city scale or a municipal scale or, or some region. Uh, Mike McGursky, who uh, was formerly at Stamen, is now the CTO at Code for America, has this really great resource where he pulls extracts of OpenStreetMap data for a uh, municipality or a region. Um, you can kind of see on this map all of the places that are covered. And you can go 
to your, uh, your region or municipality, download the data for that, and you can get it as a shapefile or I can't remember all the other. Uh, yeah, so all of this type of information. Um, pull that down. I use the shape files, combine all these things together, and put them in a tool called TileMill. Now, TileMill is also an open source tool, which comes from Mapbox. Um, if, how many people have heard of Mapbox? Everybody, that's great. Um, so usually what TileMill is used for is generating your own custom tiles for putting on a map. But there's honestly no reason that you can't just stick data in there instead of making a pretty picture. So that's what I did. Um, I look at uh, essentially what the different attributes are on the OpenStreetMap data, and I give and I uh, make use of the the B value of the pixel. So pixel is RGB, um, red, blue, and green. I just use blue, which is why everything is some shade of blue here. So what we can do is say if for a what, what is called here a motorway or rail or uh, water, we can give it a very high value, uh, which is what these things are here. We see like lakes and ponds and interstates and things like that. Like it's very hard to walk across that surface. Um, I don't know if you ever tried to walk across water. I've only heard of one person who's ever been able to do it. So, um, so, so generally we assume this is a very high friction. Um, and then as we move down the spectrum, we can basically look at, well, what type of road is it? How, how could I move across this surface? Like if it's a residential road or a sidewalk or pedestrian, um, pedestrian surface or a park, like we can assume relatively low friction and put all these values together. And what tile mill does is takes all these things you tell it what, what your extent is, what your zoom level is, zoom levels are that you want to support, and it generates all of these images for you, just straight out of the bat. Um, you get those as a SQLite database, uh, which is kind of, a, it's basically a, pro, a proprietary version of, of, it's not proprietary, but it's a custom format that they use SQLite to, to, to do a lot of their work on. Um, but you can use a tool called MB Tiles, which will run against this, no, MB utils, run against their MB tiles and extract all the raw images, and then you can have access to them yourself. Uh, next is, now that everything is in a tile, it is very, very rare that what I'm working in um, is only going to be a single tile. So I need to be able to calculate for a certain area what, what tiles do I need um, for what I'm working on. So uh, there's a uh, this great library, which is uh, several years old at this point, basically around um, converting from extents and lat longs to uh, tiles, all the different tile formats that are supported. So there's the Google tile format, the TMS tile format, and, and um, Quadtree, which is what Microsoft uses. And this is a really nice library for like moving between those. Um, so there's a, a JavaScript port uh, that I use. And what I end up doing is essentially stitching all of these, these things together so I can very simply just run the cost distance algorithm and get it uh, against it. So like I said, this would be the cost raster of what we're talking about. And then uh, there's a little library that I wrote, uh, costdistance.js, essentially a JavaScript uh, version of this algorithm. And it simply looks like this where you have your cost raster, which is essentially what I read from those tiles, our source raster, which is where I'm starting. And then once I run calculate on it, the output is here. And it's open source, this, this entire project. Uh, so walkshow.js is a, um, basically a prototype demo of, of this technology. So if anybody wants to, to uh, collaborate on it, that would be great. Um, I, I need an excuse to kind of take this to where it's where it ought to go. So this is Waksha.js, um, and the way it works is uh, you essentially click on a spot, and it runs the entire process there. So what what's happening when I click this? Um, I get the lat long. I go. I, I, I perform a, a buffer operation around it, so I just kind of know well if I'm going to go a mile in every direction, how far out do I need to go? have my extent. From there, I can go and fetch the cost raster that I need, the cost rasters that I need in order to do this calculation. 
I used Tile Stitcher to stitch all of those things together in HTML5 Canvas. And then um, I turn my lat long into my single source pixel, because that's where I'm starting. And then I run cost distance again, against it. I get my um, two-dimensional array back. I uh, colorize it using a color ramp, and then uh, put it on the map using leaflet and HTML5 canvas. And for running in the browser, I feel like this is really zippy. I mean, it's not like GeoTrellis, but it's still really awesome. And, and what's, what I think is really cool about this particular tool is that you can really start to see how the built environment affects how far you can go. Like, if you're, if you're looking at like South Philly here, like you can see it's got a really tight uh, street grid, and you can see how far you can go. It's, it's almost like this, this perfect diamond shape. As we get closer to the river, you can see how the river really cuts off access there, um, not surprisingly. If we move out here, um, we can see, click. Oh, that's sad. Let's try again. I don't know. Maybe it just doesn't like West Philly. Oh, um, maybe the internet died. Um, but it, it's really neat because you can really see how these different, um, I'm gonna try over here. Strange. You can really see how the built environment impacts this. And I think that's, that's really important to understand um, the, the link between how the built environment um, is, is put together and the impact it has on us, on our access, and all of these different things. Um, I have seven seconds left. Um, so real, real briefly, kind of like what's next, I would really like to uh, have the opportunity to get this to a point where it would, um, uh, it's, it's much more robust. There's, there's, everything is really happening um, synchronously. Uh, there's no parallelization to it. Um, we're not using web workers or anything. There's a lot of improvements um, to where this, to, to make this a lot faster and a lot more performant. Um, and uh, th that way, if we can get those improvements in, then we can start hopefully seeing this sort of technology in um, much more real world application. So that's it, and I really appreciate your time, so thank you so much.